fans this is the real kai soto fan channel ksf this is about all positive opinions rumors news about kai soto let's get into it this video is about kai's decision on being undrafted and why it is the best option so far as far as being drafted or undrafted in the 2022 nba draft is concerned now for me it is the best decision that was made by a prospect so far this 2022 NBA draft. Now why is it the best decision ever? The year was 99-9 and the date was 30th of June. San Antonio Spurs selected Manu Ginobili. With the 57th selection in the 1999 NBA draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Emmanuel Gino Bili from Argentina. He plays for Reggio Calabri in Italy, 6'6", a two guard. He is a native of Argentina. And this kid understands coming off of a screen, he understands moving out the ball to get his shot, and he's very sound defensively. I'll tell you, I, I, I think that that's a good pick at that, at that point in the draft. But for everyone's information, Manu didn't actually sign with San Antonio until 2002. People actually don't realize the risk of injury is always there, but the advantage of an NBA team having the draft and stash deal is they can always wave off the player anytime they want. This is the case of San Antonio's Lidio Young Charles in 2013, whom showed very promising, but unfortunately, he tore his ACL a month later. It caused a crucial season of development that eventually derailed his career. He never ever played a regular season game for the Spurs. Pretty sad ending but obviously Manny Ginobili, 6'6", shooting guard of San Antonio definitely is a steal. However, it is clear, no doubt that 6'6 shooting guards are simply just all over. such as three-time NBA All-Star with one NBA championship, 6'7 shooting guard, Richard Hamilton. <music> NBA Rookie of the Year, NBA Slam Dunk Contest Champion, eight-time NBA All-Star, Vince Carter. Seven-time NBA All-Star Tracy McGrady are just one of the few that Manu Ginobili will be defending. So pretty much shooting guards within his height are just very many and definitely very competitive. So definitely there are lots and lots of competition. So I can say that he got lucky to have the draft and stash deal but again San Antonio made an epic steal as he was eventually became the NBA Sixth Man of the Year, two-time NBA All-Star, four-time NBA Champion. In the case of Kai Soto, him being undrafted to all mock draft major sports sites, that is, are very much different. People think that Kai Soto should be drafted or at least in the second round for him to play in the NBA. As what Kai's agent Joe Bell had said, if he will be drafted as a lottery pick, 
Probably. But in his case, Kai should be viewed as highly valued commodity. Because to most of the people, even NBA basketball enthusiasts, are saying that Kai is a very skilled player and 7-3 doesn't come all the time. For some people that don't know who Kai Soto is, he is the most intriguing prospect because of his height, 7-3. And he just turned 20 years old and his highlights are all over the internet. His highlights in private workouts are getting even more intriguing than of any other prospects. Although there are criticisms, but what is clear is his skills for his height. As much as we love Kai, the reality is Kai appears to be undrafted in all major sports sites. We know for sure what's the reason why, but the thing is, it did really hurt Kai for being drafted in the 2022 NBA draft for sure, no doubt. Fans and even moderate basketball enthusiasts are surprised or disappointed, so there are lots of mixed emotions all throughout, even up until now, about Kai being undrafted on mock drafts and definitely him not being drafted by NBA teams. From what I can see, Kai's agent is protecting his value as a rare 7-3 basketball player that has the mobility, lob threat, good passer, block specialist, 3-point threat, and has high basketball IQ. So pretty much to make him remain intriguing as ever. I believe going down to sign the draft and stash deal will only hurt Kai's basketball career as he won't be having the freedom to choose if in case it didn't go well with the summer league at least he can choose to play in the Euro League if he will get a better offer or just continue playing in the NBL for the remaining season in Adelaide 36ers to hone his skills. Like I said, it is not always the case of Manu Ginobili whom chose to sign the draft and stash deal because Manu, like I said, has lots of competition for his position in basketball so it's more an opportunity for him that he needs to grab like with Yuga Bazan of the New Zealand Breakers wherein that could be their last shot of having an offer compared to Kai Soto since his height and skills are pretty rare he will be always in the radar anyway one way or another be it this year or next year I mean guys like Hugo Bazan and the 1999 Manu Ginobili is now or never type of situation not with Kai so long that Kai remains intriguing by means of his performance playing basketball in summer league NBL Euro League FIBA and so on. He should remain intriguing by making sure he remains healthy and playing basketball in the highest level as much as possible. He still has a bright future, no doubt, and the NBA dream is still alive as ever. With the 58th pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the Indiana Pacers select Hugo Besson from Bondol, France. Hugo Besson in the French LNB Pro B League, and you can see a couple opportunities where teams said, "Listen, we'll draft you, but we don't want you to come right now. We want to hold your rights. We want to stash you on a team outside the United States," and that's generally a pretty bad idea. And what the audience and the basketball public needs to understand is. I'll give you two examples here. Let's look at the player who was drafted um, last in the draft, uh, you know, Besson, who played also in Australia. That team now owns his rights forever. He can't talk to other teams. If he wants to play in the NBA, he's got to talk only to that team. That team has all the leverage. If they don't have a spot for him, they can say, we don't have a spot for you. And there's nothing he can do about it. He's stuck with that team. By not being drafted, in a year when Kai is going to be stronger and obviously more marketable than the teams, and he got a lot of people intrigued this year, we can talk to all 30 teams. He's an unrestricted free agent. It's much better to be able to talk to 30 teams in 
to be locked into one team. I think anybody can see that. You know, there's a general feeling on draft night, oh, you got to have your name called. Well, that's true if you're going to be in the top 10, for sure, okay? But to be locked into a team and have them have your rights and they don't want you now and they may not ever want you is generally a pretty horrible idea. And Kai and his team made a uh, very sophisticated, intelligent decision and uh, said, no, we don't want to do the draft and stash. And, you know, teams will ask you before they do that because they need you to cooperate. Uh, and that's what we told them. So we had a couple opportunities for that. We, we had a couple opportunities that I knew of during the season in Australia where teams said, yeah, well, hey, we'll draft them, uh, you know, if you guys will do that. And I told them I'll go back to them and have to make any decisions in February or March. But that's kind of how it went. But Kai had a good draft process. He showed a lot of things to teams, and uh, he's going to be heavily on the radar uh, for these teams in this coming year. If you like our video, click the like button. Questions and comments are highly encouraged. Please do subscribe and click the notification bell for more updates. Peace out.